I'm convinced that the American church has arrived at a significant moment of truth. We are only 75, 80 years removed from three separate regimes that killed 60 to 70 million people intentionally. The parallels with where the American church is now to where the German church stood in the face of the Nazi regime are unavoidable and grim. Churches need to understand really what Marxism is, which is to destroy the church, to destroy the word of God. So if you capture the seminaries, you capture the pastors, you capture the laity, you capture the soul of the world. Christianity is not just about saying Jesus loves you and then going to heaven one day, but that there's a war that's raging. The church is weakening, which is why Marxism is ascendant in America today. This is the hour of the American church. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to prayer tonight. Appreciate that so much. It is a responsibility as well as a privilege. A privilege to talk to God, a responsibility to talk to God on behalf of others, our world, and our nation. And we uh, appreciate so much you tuning in, giving us a little bit of your, your Wednesday night and come into agreement with us as we pray. And uh, we will have plenty to play, pray about tonight. Uh, remember coming up in about two weeks, well, April 14th is the film, Letter to the American Church. Eric Metaxas uh, movie. It's an excellent book. I encourage you to get it. But we will be showing that here. It, it's on Sunday afternoon at five o'clock. Five o'clock. One hour film. Eric will be coming in from California to be with us to have question and answer uh, time and also to uh, sign his book for you if you want. But I encourage you to be a part of this. It is a vital word for our time, strategic word for our time. Uh, an alert from the Holy Spirit comes through this. And uh, I encourage you to be here. Pastors come, bring your prayer groups, praise teams, staffs. Everyone is welcome. It is free. And so come and be a part. Again, April 14th. Five o'clock Sunday afternoon. Uh, the next Ecclesia Hub is May the 3rd, and that's Friday night, maybe six weeks or so from now. It's coming up. It's Friday night, seven o'clock with Prophet Hank Kuhneman. And uh, I encourage you to be a part of this night. We will be worshiping the Lord preparing an atmosphere for Holy Spirit to speak to us. We will be praying into that, that time and believing for a download of Holy Spirit uh, concerning our times. We're commanded to hear what Holy Spirit sa says. We're commanded to hear from the prophets. How many times do you read in the Old Testament where the leadership called for a prophet? Isn't there a prophet that can come and, and prophesy? We need a prophet to come. A king asking for a prophet to come. We need a prophet to prophesy into our times. And then we can strategize off of that. So be in prayer for Brother Hank and prayer for that night and make your plans to be here May the 3rd, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Our prayer time tonight, I want to uh, talk about or give a warning concerning last Sunday when our president blasphemed the living God. This is something we cannot allow to stand. In fact, Holy Spirit spoke to me about two years, I guess, or so ago to, uh, now. And he said, do not let evil proclamations stand. Don't let them stand. 
Do not let an evil decree stand. Replace it with what I say. Confront it. Pray against it. And uh, I realize that on Wednesday nights, there may be a few thousand of us that are going to hear this. And you say, well, what about the whole nation? Millions. Well, when we do things in the spirit realm, it magnifies and synergizes. And from that spirit realm, it begins to affect the natural realm. So we, we can make decrees and we can pray and God can change things. It also activates angel armies. So we're not just beating the air tonight. We are doing a significant uh, principle of the word of God and we're declaring against an evil decree. But most of you probably know, but Joe Biden proclaimed last Sunday, which was Resurrection Sunday, that it was Transgender Visibility Day. Uh, it, is, it is, of course, a double desecration because Transgender Day, uh, first of all, God was the creator and he didn't create transgender. It's male and female. It's not he, she. There's no confusion there. The creator did it right. Don't blaspheme him. But secondly, also it blasphemes against one of the most holy days in the church's history, which is of course, resurrection day. This of course, was deliberate. Listen to these uh, days that America set aside for transgender or homosexual uh, celebrations. It's incredible. Some 145 days, there is a homosexual celebration observed by the United States of America. And it's time that we wake up that this is deliberate. I'm not going to read all 145, but here's some. The LGBTQA Health Awareness Week is March 21 through 25. Um, International Asexual Day, April 6. International Day of Pink, the day to oppose homophobia. Uh, day of Silence, Lesbian Visibility Day. Uh, May 17th is International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, Transphobia. Uh, May 19th, Transgender Pride Day. Uh, May 22, Harvey Milk Day. Um, International Lesbian Day. Um, like I say, there's 145 of them. National Coming Out Day. Uh, International Pronoun Day. Uh, October is uh, International Lesbian Day, Gender Fluid Visibility Week. It just goes on and on. And then, of course, last Sunday was Gender Visibility on Resurrection Day. Why is this dangerous? It is dangerous because of what God's Word says. And as watchmen, we should pray this and we have to pray for protection on ourselves and our family because consequences come when you blaspheme God. Again, pray for ourselves that we are protected and we can be, but the land is open to some defilement and consequences. It's dangerous because this is called in the Bible, uh, an abomination. Abomination is the Hebrew word to'eve, and it means morally disgusting. It means perversion. It means destructive behaviors to families. The homosexual agenda is destructive to God's way for families to, uh, to relate. Uh, also, destructive behavior to societies, to'eve, abhorrent, 
And it also is used sometimes to refer to uh, idolatry. It is an abomination in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So what the president did is an abomination. And we can't let that stand. We have to, we have to respectfully and truthfully stand against it. Now, here's the scripture, Leviticus 18, 22, New King James Version. I'll read, it's brief. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Do not defile yourselves, for by all these, the nations, nations, nation are defiled. It defiles a nation which I am casting out before you. Remember, the promised land was defiled by those who practiced the homosexual agendas, lifestyle. And because of that, their land was defiled and God said, I'll take it away. And he continues, for the land is defiled, therefore... I visit the punishment of its iniquity upon it and the land vomits. Now that's about as descriptive as you're going to get. The land, the territory, the nation is defiled. In other words, it's a curse that comes upon the nation if the nation embraces this. And of course, we, the Ecclesia, will not. New Living Translation, do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman is a detestable sin. Do not defile yourself in any of these ways for the people I'm driving out before you have defiled themselves in all of these ways. Because the entire land has become defiled I am punishing the people who live there and I will cause the land to vomit them out. You must obey all my decrees and regulations. You must not commit any of these detestable sins. This applies both to the native born Israelites and to the foreigners live among you. All these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land where I am taking you. And this is how the land became defiled. So do not defile the land and give it a reason to vomit you out. What a warning. Obviously, God uses very descriptive and powerful language to issue the warning, don't do this, don't do it. It defiles the land and it activates a curse. Uh, but America, uh, at least our leaders, in many cases, are defiling our land. And it happened last Sunday, the nation was defiled. What do we do? Well, we must pray. And I, I, even Monday morning when I got up, I felt so burdened for our nation and I just said, Lord, I'm sorry that this is, that, that you have been blasphemed, that you have been defiled this way or your principles. I'm sorry that on our watch this happened, but I will not let it stand. I will say something. I will not be silent. I will not be complicit by my silence and neither will your ecclesia. We will stand. To be clear, and I want to be clear, we don't hate anyone. We do not hate homosexuals, love them, want to see them forgiven and saved. Uh, and all can be forgiven of sin, but we cannot san sanction sin. We certainly cannot celebrate sin and we cannot okay an abomination. We pray for repentance. Um, because if we don't, it defiles the land and it opens us, us up to sick times, vomit times. And that is dangerous. Again, very descriptive words. 
And so I have begun to pray these last few days for repentance to come to our leaders, our president, and if not, for them to be removed. And we have the right to do that according to Matthew 16, 18 and 19. If there is not repentance in Jesus name, I forbid Joe Biden from being the president of the United States. It's going to be my prayer. If there's not repentance, we cannot let it stand. Why? Because our president and many others, but he made the proclamation. He has blasphemed you. He has blasphemed the church. He has blasphemed the King's resurrection day. And we must declare the homosexual agenda is not embraced by the people of God. We reject this proclamation in the name of King Jesus. We bind it from being effective in the name of Jesus. And we command this to backfire and boomerang and uh, actually turn for good in Jesus name. Now we'll pray this or I will in just uh, a couple of minutes, but also some other prayer points now. Remember the river bridges and reservoirs, dams, infrastructure, electric grid that we've been praying for, continue to do that. And you can continue to send in the assignments you've been on. Uh, I'd love to look at, at those. But we have been told by our FBI and by uh, our, our border security that it's, it's not if, it's when terrorist attacks are coming. And of course, proclamations like the, that was done last week, that opens it up. And we have to start praying for protection. But terrorist cells have come into our nation. We know that. Gangs are here. ISIS is here. And the FBI says it's not if, it's when. So we need to keep praying for infrastructure and praying against terrorist attacks. And also remember to declare Psalms 91. And I want to inject this now. Uh, yes, wherever we go, we're declaring Psalms 91 at the rivers, the dams, etc. But because of this defilement and the consequences it brings, I would encourage you to pray Psalms 91 over you, your children, your families, your businesses, and ask God to protect because consequences come if you defile God. But thankfully, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, He protects. The shaking comes, but we are not shaken. Also, we will pray concerning Israel. The United States, for the first time in the United Nations, refused to vote in favor of Israel. Another danger sign that we are, we are commanded to support Israel. But our government has decided uh, we, we're not going to support Israel. And at the United States, they did not vote in favor of Israel. Very dangerous. We've got to pray. And we've got to change the leadership. So I'm going to pray. And I invite you to pray with me. My burden is not necessarily your burden, but I have a feeling that there are many of you that are burdened for our nation right now. And we're burdened concerning the leadership that we have in, in our nation that's got to change. And so we pray. And thankfully, our God says, if we pray, He'll heal our land. Our God says he'll answer if we will. If we answer the bell, he will. And uh, we're responsibility, uh, responsible to do this. Lord, we are sorry for what has happened these last few days and how America's government has blasphemed you. We repent of that. 
And we ask you, God, that you would intervene and you would change our leadership if there is not repentance. If, if they don't turn, Lord, we ask that, that even in these coming elections, you will overturn this, this diabolical regime. We ask for the elections to be fair. We ask you to uncover all evil. And we ask for your protection over the families of God, over the church, over our peoples, concerning the consequences of defiling the land. We pray, God, that truth, the real truth, would continue to be revealed. In fact, God, as a result of this defilement and this blasphemy, we ask you, God, to hurry it up, accelerate the exposure and reveal what is true. We pray against injustice. We pray against two-tiered justice. We pray against the injustice against the church, against Christianity, against conservative values if they are based upon Christian values. Even what I have just talked about tonight would be labeled by our government hate speech. I have declared your word. We know, Lord, that you are going to answer this. Not a doubt in my mind, you are going to answer this. But we would pray, Lord, for protection over the house of God. We declare, Lord, do what you must do. Shake whatever has to be shaken, and we will be content in a kingdom that is not going to be shaken. Shake down evil, shake down diabolical laws, blasphemy, shake it down in Jesus' name. We do pray for Israel, Lord, that you will protect it in this wartime. And we pray that wise leaders will rise in our nation's capital, uh, in all capitals, and they will stand with Israel, not against her. We know that, that there are many voices rising against Israel right now. And the church rises to add its voice and the authority that you've given us in the name of Jesus. And we say, Israel be protected. Israel win your victory. Israel, Israel triumph. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray against the terrorist, terrorism attacks that we've been told are coming and that our leaders continually open us up to. But we would pray, Lord, that you would expose those attacks, that you would limit them. We pray, God, that the severity would be uh, limited, that you would expose these attacks as we go pray. And we pray, God, for mercy. You said you want to give mercy. If we'll pray, you'll give us mercy. Lord, right now, I, in my heart, I know we need mercy. We cannot let this stand, Lord. We're, we're appealing to you. Give us mercy. Do what you must do, and we will obey. But give us mercy. Protect our families and protect our children. Protect our jobs, our businesses in Jesus' name. Lord, we also pray for revival. We know that ultimately we need a supernatural transitional awakening, revival, reformation. You have promised it to us. And we pray, God, that those revivals amp up and begin to accelerate forward. And that thousands of of, of people would come to know Christ and that would reject the defiling of the land and would turn to you. A kingdom-wide revival, Lord. One that is in all nations, in all states, all, all nations of the world, all ecclesia hubs. Lord, we're asking you to accelerate that in Jesus' name. We ask for the harvest to be great. 
We pray against the homosexual agenda that is so obvious. 145 days celebrated in the United States. That's an agenda. But we as the body of Christ, we as the ecclesia bind that demonic agenda. We bind its activities from our culture and society and government. We bind it in our schools. We command its defeat. We send confusion to those demon powers that are behind it. We know, Lord, that demons are behind the blasphemy. And so we use our authority that has been given to us in Matthew 16, 18, and 19. Whatever we forbid, be forbidden. Whatever we permit, be permitted. We forbid the homosexual agenda from being followed in the United States. We send confusion against it. We ask the angels of God to battle with us against us. And we command the reversal of this blasphemy in Jesus' name. Again, Lord, you have said things will be shaken because of the rebellion against you. Shake what needs to be shaken, but we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We're confident and we trust you. We pray for the film that is coming up that it will bring awakening the uh, the film, Lord, the letter to the American church. We need that message. Amp it up here. May people respond and then go be a voice. And may it occur everywhere, Lord, in our nation and world. We pray for the Ecclesia Hub meeting that's coming up. Lord, download prophetic understanding to Prophet Hank Kuhneman. Set the atmosphere. May it be electrified with the word of the living God because it has the breaker anointing on it. I pray, Lord, that the breaker anointing be on that meeting. I believe it will, Lord. I feel it inside. Bless that night, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we turn ourselves to the promise that you have made to heal us. That's another a reason to celebrate the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus by his stripes were healed. And so we pause now and I encourage you intercessors, you are praying with me, begin to pray for healings and miracles. Lord, those that are watching tonight that they may be sick in body. I pray Lord that your healing power, the covenant of healing will come to them wherever they are. Some may be in bed tonight. Heal them, Lord, and raise them up just like you did Peter's mother-in-law. You healed her as she got up, Lord, out of that bed of affliction. Heal blind eyes tonight. We're coming together, Lord, in agreement concerning the promise you have made. We rebuke cancer. We bind it. That spirit of infirmity, we curse you in Jesus' name. We command your defeat. The anointing of the king is being released tonight to heal those that have cancer. Heal people with digestive disorders, heart disease, lungs, whatever that condition may be. Those tonight that are watching, would you reach out and begin to pull by faith on the power of the living God to heal you. We send the word of the Lord be healed in Jesus name by the stripes upon his back. Healing is the children's bread. It's your right to partake of healing. Partake of it tonight. Receive the power of God to flow wherever that affliction may be inside of you or in your skin or wherever. Lord, we pray against all form of disease and sickness. Jesus, you healed them all and you are still the resurrected Lord who heals your people. And so we release the healing power of the of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords Jesus to heal thousands even this night in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you for praying with me tonight. And now our decrees. This is from the uh, angel book, my first angel book. By the way, the new book, Rachel and my uh, new book, Come Home, is now a national, uh, one of the national bestsellers. And you can get that, just just uh, go on our website and get it. It's concerning prodigals. Somehow it's being emphasized right now because I'm hearing from all over the nation concerning this book and uh, you can pick it up. But here's our decrees that are going to help replace the evil decree of last week. Uh, the transgenerational outpouring prophesied by Joel, be loosed, be loosed in Jesus' name. Anointing all, on all flesh, be loosed to us and, to, and through us. Anointing for increased dreams and visions, be released concerning destinies. Talk to prodigals, that way we pray in Jesus' name. We decree lost harvest will now be restored Diabolical decrees will not stop this. Lost property will now be restored. Lost finances will be restored. The years, the locusts, the palmer worm and the canker worm of Eden will now be restored in Jesus' name. Diabolical blasphemous decrees will not stop it. We decree a higher decree, the word of the living God. And we're going to keep doing it in Jesus name. Thank you for praying with me. I appreciate it so much. Keep praying, keep decreeing. And uh, we'll talk to you more Sunday morning. Bless you.